This is hydrology and fluvial geomorphology. We'll look through four sections in this unit, starting with part one, the drainage basin system. So this one is particularly vocabulary heavy. Um, so just try to keep up with that. Obviously pause and make sure you know each one as you're going along. There's nothing too complicated. And, and then afterwards, make sure you write out all your definitions and learn them very well. The trick to this is being able to use this vocabulary efficiently and that way all the questions that you're going to answer about it end up being very simple and easy to get high marks in. Okay, so we're looking at the freshwater reserves, which is about 3% of the water on the planet. Um, and of that 3%, 77% is locked up and is frozen, while then there's another 1% uh, overland which we have access to and 22% some of which we have access to in the groundwater. So that 22 and 1% is really what we're discussing, how humans interact with it and how it naturally flows. Okay, let's start up here. So the first thing to understand is a drainage basin itself. How do we define a drainage basin? So a drainage basin here is anything in the light colors. So it starts from an area which is a source and basically what separates it is this drainage basin and this one, let's say this is another drainage basin uh, in here. So what separates it is really like orographic barriers and uh, relief, right? So mountains. So if rain falls here, it's going to flow downstream that way. Same here. So in that way it works kind of like a basin shape, right? And all the precipitation then goes in here. So that means the water is sort of confined into this drainage basin everything's moving into it in this way. Likewise, in the next one, if it rains here, it's gonna end up coming down there, right? So it feeds in there, and usually each drainage basin then has like an area where the water uh, meets the sea or the ocean, or it has uh, an entry into another point, right? So multiple drainage basins, there's a lot, even in this image itself on this one area, the map in France, now what divides a drainage basin? A watershed divides a drainage basin. So this is the kind of watershed here, if we think about it. So again, anything that rains on this side is going into that drainage basin. Anything on this side is gonna flow down and into this drainage basin. So the watershed is the line that divides it. Now it's not always so distinctful, but this is just quite a, a good example if we go all the way back up to the start of the mountain, uh, or the start of the river up in the mountains. A tributary then is a river that joins, a small river that joins a bigger one, and a confluence is the point in which they meet. So it's hard to know which one is the small one here, but let's say, for example, this is the big one, and it's curving around like this, and this is a small one adding into it, then this will be known as the tributary to the main river. River source then is where it begins high up in the mountains. The source then could be changing seasonally. Usually it's small enough so you can just like walk across it at this point and joins up and then, uh, yeah, it's not gonna have such mass all the way up from the very, very top. Runs down then into many confluences, uh, lots of tributaries and gets bigger and bigger and bigger as it goes down. And then the river mouth or the estuary is going to be here, the estuary where the river mouth comes out and that's when the, the water's leaving. So this is gonna be a very wide feature here. The river's gonna be at its biggest, carrying its largest um, discharge, uh, the amount of water passing any area. Uh, so this is a large body at the end of it. So that's the main vocabulary of the drainage basin as you're describing them. And um, we will be using them here and there throughout the unit. So here we can see the Amazon drainage basin and the Amazon drainage basin source is then coming all the way in here to Peru we see multiple ones there because the Andes mountains are, the Andes are uh, dividing it here. Andes mountains actually pop up in the, the course quite a bit. Um, so yeah, it's raining on this side. So all the water is moving that direction. Moving down, we have multiple tributaries. And obviously, if you know uh, your basic geography, the Amazon then has the largest uh, discharge in the world out of any river and has huge rivers that are only tributaries here which could be uh, the biggest rivers in, in most countries and it all leads into one big Amazon River basin until it goes out to the mouth here. So quite an interesting one, very large, very complex there, loads of really massive confluences there and uh, yeah, lots of water. Okay, now we're going to go through the movement of 
water, right? How does the water cycle happen? Now, if you remember back to, I hope that helped. If you want to continue learning, the rest of the course is below in our link. Um, you can sign up and learn there through all these videos. There's over 10 hours of videos of the content. Um, and this teaches you everything about the case studies, the concepts in each section, and you can just take it at your own pace. Um, within each course, then you'll get a PDF printout, some short questions and a video that just discusses the different parts uh, of the course. So those are the full videos there and should give you all the information, oops, should give you all the information that you need throughout the course in order to successfully answer any exam questions. We also have a second course that's just dedicated to the exam paper skills where you learn what a good example is, what a bad example is, why different scores are awarded for different reasons, and it should be able to elevate your uh, ability to write these answers. It's also going to give you examples, so you've got like 80 example uh, exam paper questions to look at and to learn from, and to potentially use some of the information in that as you're going forward. So it's also a, a good way to learn too. Okay guys, if you like, please subscribe and let me know if you have any questions, and I'll be happy to answer them.